It's bottling day. We're going to be bottling our chocolate Merlot. I'm Greg. I'm Julie. And we're the Crafty Winers. So it's the end of a journey for this one. We're ready to bottle it. Uh, chocolate Merlot started... February 6th. Month and a half old. See some sediment down at the bottom. We're going to be careful to stay out of that, but it's actually going to be easy because you, I'm sure, can't tell on camera, but there are... A lot of marbles. A lot of marbles on top of that sediment. The reason for that is that we've done quite a few tastings on this. We've been experimenting with this to get the taste that we wanted, and we've had, uh, we actually had a tasting online that at this point hasn't been released yet, but by the time you watch this, it might have been, so if so, we'll link it. If not, <laughs> you're going to have to wait for me to get it edited. <laughs> But yeah, we've done a lot of tasting of this to make sure that it was exactly the way that we wanted it. And the last time we did it, it was. And I want to tell you, the smell that's coming out of this right now is amazing. That's very chocolatey in this vicinity right now. So you're probably wondering what this is, and I've teased on a couple other videos that I would eventually tell you. So this is a fishing bobber. It's PVC plastic, and it's been sanitized. So, you know, don't have any of those bad pictures in your head of fish in my wine. There are no fish in the wine. Yeah. But the chain, what is on the other end of this is what's important. We have a little infuser. I'll link this infuser uh, below. We've got two of them. This is the small size and then we have one that's a bigger size. This has our oak in it and this also has some of our secret ingredient for this chocolate Merlot. And we'll go over that when we release the recipe video for this. But, so the first thing that we're going to do, again, we're bottling this. this. So this is the last opportunity for me to make sure that everything is incorporated. We do this before our tastings, too. We make sure that, that I do this dunking ritual to make sure that all the oak flavor and all the secret ingredient flavor are getting mixed into this. Actually, he's fishing for chocolate. I, I like that <laughs> explanation a lot better than the truth. Be careful when you're doing this. When you're taking it out, you don't want bubbles and oxygenation to happen. I heard a, there was like a squeaking noise as I took it out as you, you could hear the, the oxygen coming out the top rather than out the sides into the wine. I think I have most of the good stuff out of this. There are some marbles in there too because initially it wanted to float. So it's probably because of the oak uh, cubes that are in it. They're a little buoyant. So there are some marbles in there too to, to keep, keep it weighted down. But the, the bobber allows you to very easily put this in and remove it, especially remove it. Uh, we had, before we did that, it was really, was a, it really was a fishing expedition to try to get the, grab the chain with a fork or something and pull it out. So now we're gonna stir this up a little bit because of the flavors that came out of that infuser and then we'll move on. Okay, and we're gonna stir this now, and just like everything else, we've sanitized everything that we're using, and if you haven't watched the video on sanitization, we will link it up there, um, so you can watch that when you have a chance. I'm stirring this very carefully again. I don't want to introduce bubbles. Oxygen at this point is not, not good for the wine. We literally just finished a video on CO2 and oxygen management, and we'll link that here. Okay, I think that's incorporated enough. So the next thing that we need to do is check our pH. We want our pH for red wine to be between 3.3 .3 and 3.8, which is uh, semi-acidic. Uh, we don't want to change the flavor from what this is. We no. really don't want to, it's really, it's good. really good. But if we need to make a minor adjustment, we can probably get away without changing the taste because it will make this more shelf stable if we do that. And on that note, we just finished a video on pH and how to adjust it. So we'll link that over here as well. So it's 4.43. We're going to note that on our batch note. And we need to be down like basically a full point. Um, if you've not watched our pH video, you 
probably should watch it before you try to do something like this. It really is kind of a major decision. We can figure out about how much tartaric acid we'd need to add to it to put the pH where it is. And we're going to probably discuss off camera whether or not we're willing to change the taste because we really like it the way that it is. And this will probably change the taste a little, not a lot to go down a point, but it will, it will, it will change it probably maybe not distinguishably. Okay. So we decided that we do not want to change the pH level. Uh, it's right before Easter time. We're just going to drink it. We really like this the way that it is and we don't want to mess with the taste at all. It's, it's really good like it is. It's and really good. if you watch the video that we did on pH, um, once you get down into this range, it's real easy to get past where you want it to be. And then you have to go back up. And, and, then, so, and then you for sure start changing the taste. Yeah. When you start raising the pH level, uh, there's more of a hit to the taste. And citric acid is going to definitely change the taste, even in small quantities, we found. Uh, you could watch, in our, yeah. watch our pH video. So now we're going to make sure that there is no CO2 to speak of left in this before we put it in bottles. So we just did a video literally right before this on degassing using our food saver. So watch that video. I think I already linked it and I can only link it once. So um, watch that video to see this whole process. But suffice it to say, we're going to be at this for probably up to 10 minutes. Uh, until I don't see really any bubbles coming out of it and I know that all the gas is out. So we're not going to make you watch this. If you're interested in how we and why we use the food saver to do this. Watch the video. Watch the video. There was no, there were no bubbles coming up from this. It's, it's degassed. So I did this for about four minutes and there's just nothing. It's, it's, there's no CO2 left in it. So we're going to put this away and we're going to start bottling. Okay. So this is an auto siphon. This is a whole lot better than most of the siphons that come with your wine kits. Again, I almost probably wouldn't have picked this up if I thought I had to use that stupid siphon. <laughs> the one that you have to submerge in water to try to get water throughout the tube without any bubbles. Yeah. So this one, you stick it in and you just do this and it starts the siphon. Then on the other end of this is a bottling wand that's got basically a valve that when she pushes down, yeah. it opens the valve. When she lifts up, it closes it the valve. It stops, so that's cool. So that pauses the siphon, and she could basically just bring the second bottle over. And continue. And continue. We're only going to do one bottle of this for the video, just to keep the length of the reasonable number. So I put it in here. I want it to be kind of close to the bottom. I don't want to introduce any air bubbles. And I'm touching the marbles that are down here. And if I didn't explain the marbles. You don't want, uh, this is called headspace at the top, if you're not aware, uh, it's oxygen. So while you're in secondary fermentation, while you're doing your um, aging and your infusion, you don't want a lot of headspace up here. So we add food safe, lead free glass marbles as we take wine out to raise the level of this. And that's why there are a lot of bubble, a lot of marbles at the bottom. Again, it's because <laughs> we've, we've consumed a lot of this getting the recipe perfected and because we like wine. And I think we did a good job on the recipe. I think we did. I'm going to start the auto siphon. She has to be pushing down on the valve or I'm basically fighting myself trying to get the <laughs> siphon started. Oh, there we go. Once it starts, you don't have to pump anymore. You see the level going down now. It's coming. So it's doing it. We were a little concerned about our height difference. You do need to have your wine jug high Higher. enough above the bottle for the siphon to start. So um, we normally do it a little bit lower that sits on the counter and then the bottles the further floor. down on the floor. But that's hard to show. So <laughs> we're trying this milk crate and it looks like it's working. And I didn't want you to see my shoes. So, so she's going to go to just the start of the neck and then she's going to stop right where the narrow part of the bottle starts. No and pressure. No, there is pressure. Look, it's, it's rising. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do uh, the rest of the bottles here off camera, and then we will show you the next step.
Okay, so I'm tipping this here as we're getting lower and you're starting to see all the marbles. I'm tipping it so that my suction doesn't grab any air because our, our siphon will end if so. So you gotta be careful, it's kind of a balancing, literally a balancing act. <laughs> literally. So I'm tipping it, trying to make sure that none of the sediment that's at the bottom starts entering my tube while she's Just finishing. A tiny bit more. So we're only gonna get a little over three bottles. And we don't mind drinking the, the little wine with a little sediment. The, the ones that we got here free of sediment will be the ones that we cork and label. We'll probably put this next bottle in one that's got a flip top and we're just gonna probably drink it this weekend. Yep. Okay, we're running out of fluid here. Right. She's on the floor trying to get our elevation correct. And as this stops, I'm gonna try to get the rest of the wine out of the tube by raising it up. I don't want much of that to go back in where I can't get it. I didn't want that to happen really either, but. Nori. <laughs> Nori's trying to grab herself some chocolate wine. Okay, so okay, we didn't we get a lot it. in that bottle. So we got three, three and almost a half bottles of this chocolate Merlot. I do want to mention that you want to sanitize, you want to use star sand or something as good inside these bottles before you put wine in them. I didn't mention that before. Oh, yeah. Everything that we use has been sanitized. Yep. And I guess this is tonight's wine. Now the next to the last step is to put the corks in. Okay, so this is a corker. This is a cheapie. You can get ones that are floor corkers for about a hundred bucks. Uh, I paid far less than that for this. You load the cork into the slot. You put the, the tool on the bottleneck. Normally I would do this on the floor, but because we want to show you what we're doing, we aren't putting it on the floor. So big hint here, soak the uh, cork in star sand. You, know, you can use water too, distilled water, if you don't like the idea of having, having it uh, soaked in sanitizer. But if you soak it and it's wet, it goes in a ton easier. <laughs> I thought I was going to break the bottle the first time that I tried this. and He didn't, but... I'm still going to struggle because it's up above me. <laughs> Don't hit me in the head. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> All right, look at that. So the cork is in. We're going to go ahead and do our other two bottles, and then we'll come back and show you the next step. Okay, so she just got done writing the bottle date on our batch note for this batch. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, we have a video that I think I can still link uh, Maybe. for batch notes. You're limited to a certain number. But it's still there, so you can find it. <laughs> yeah, if it's not, if I wasn't able to link it there, then just look through our videos and you'll find it. So these are PVC heat shrink capsules. You don't need to do this, but it definitely adds a professional look to your to your bottles and they're really cheap. They'll be in the description below. And easy. And they're pretty easy. I didn't mess it up too terribly last time. So <laughs> this is a high heat, not maybe terribly high heat. This is a pretty <laughs> standard hair dryer. This is a cheap Walmart hair dryer. <laughs> it's so what it is. I'm gonna put my finger on the top to try to keep this thing level and then Prepare for corgis because cor our corgis really like hair dryers. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> yeah, we didn't think about that when we were preparing Oops. for this. Okay, so prepare for corgi catastrophe. <laughs> At least they can't reach up here. Oops. Oh, you hit the reset on the, the yeah, that thing. <laughs> Take two. I'm not qualified to run a hair dryer. <laughs> You can see it's shrinking to fit the bottle. Don't want to get it terribly close because you don't need to and it may shrink faster than you're prepared for. Because that's pretty good. Looks good. Last step is the label, which I have to go find. <laughs> Ready? Oh, oh, it's not even on yet. We thought we'd show you what Pippin and Nori do with hair dryers. We, we don't we don't really understand why, but every time she blow dries her hair, this is the ritual. This and garbage bags are her other 
Are right. you done? Okay. She's done. <laughs> Dork. Okay, so here are our labels. They've been printed for a while in expectation of tonight. <laughs> Says Pippinori 2024 Merlot. Pippinori. Pippinori. Is uh, Pippin and Nori are dogs, our corgis. 2024 Merlot, and it says well rounded and smooth with hints of chocolate. And then I have a batch number in parentheses so that if anybody ever says, hey, I really like that bottle of chocolate Merlot, I can ask them for the number and go look at the recipe and the batch notes. I'm going to let her do this because she's an expert at it, and I don't even know why I was trying to pull it off. I am, I am not an expert at it, but I have to lay the bottle down to be able to do this. We did intentionally use the hairdryer. Um, before this because it's warm and it's dry right now because of the hair dryer. Okay. Beautiful. There we go. There you go. So there is bottling from start to finish and uh, looks like quite a finish. And then I'm going to do the, so, the Vanna thing. I'm not going to do the Vanna thing. <laughs> so hope you enjoyed this video on bottling. Um, if you did, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. Um, we appreciate your guys' support. Um, thank you for watching. See you next time, and cheers! <laughs>